So at the top of the page, it says in general density is the ratio of mass uh, people or things to volume or area. We've used the equation or the ratio mass to volume equals density to come up with the equations that are filled in within this triangle. So now we're going to have three volunteers come up to do one through three as it's a review. So when I start recording again, the answers will be there. In question number one, given the mass and density, we had to uh, compute the volume. Correct answer is there, but do you guys mathematically, have you take a, uh, taken a look at it, what's going on with your units and why they cancel out? So density um, here, grams per milliliter, the mass, 95, uh, 95 grams. So in terms of the unit, it's up top, the grams divided by a fraction. And when you divide by grams per milliliters, you do the keep, change, flip. So the grams end up canceling out. Okay. So number one is correct. And number two, what is the density of a uh, 50 milliliter salt solution that has a mass of 67? So density, he's got 67 grams divided by 50 milliliters. That is correct, 1.34 grams per milliliter. And then number three, what is the mass of 60.3 milliliters of wine with a density of 1.3 grams per milliliter? That should be a lowercase m, round to the nearest hundredth. And the mass is correct, 83.82 grams approximately. So now before we get into uh, doing some questions that actually involve some computations, conceptually in number four, all right, in number four, it's good to make some notes as you go along, noting what you have in each problem. In four, we have a balloon and a rock. They each have a volume of one cubic foot. The rock is much heavier than the balloon, what does this say about the density of the balloon compared to the density of the rock? So density is the ratio of mass to volume. So they both, the rock and the balloon, have a volume of one. What can you say about the density given this information of the balloon compared to the density of the rock with a sentence to explain? Yeah. The density what? Because, yeah, the volume's one. So she's saying that the density is equal to the mass because the volume is one. So whatever this number is, and you can put in some numbers, if the rock is much heavier, give me some numbers for the mass of the rock and the mass of the balloon. You can make it up. So give me a number for the mass of the rock if it's heavier. 700 grams. Balloon? Four grams. Okay? So she's saying the density is equivalent because you're dividing by one, so 700 grams per cubic feet. The density would be four grams per cubic feet. So which is the greater density? The rock. Why? Because it has the greater mass. So in geometry, instead of just giving you the volume, as you saw above in those questions one, two, and three, we're going to actually have to do some calculations to determine the volume. So we have a rectangular block of copper metal that weighs 1,896 grams. Let's note the mass. The dimensions of the block are 8.4 centimeters by 5.5 by 4.6. From this data, what's the density? So density being mass over volume, we have the 1896, we need the volume. So volume for a rectangular prism, what's the formula? Length times width times height. So we have volume equivalent to 8.4 times 5.5 times 4.6. So we're going to 1,890, or 
Yep, 96 divided by our volume here is 212.52 cubic centimeters. So 212.52 centimeters cubed. Our density is going to be to the nearest whole number, so approximately how many grams per cubic centimeters? Nine. In number six, we have a cylindrical candle with a radius of three centimeters and a height of eight centimeters with a mass of 300 grams. So I'm going to move this up to utilize the space. Let's create three columns here for part A, part B, and C. Part A, what is the density of this candle to the nearest hundredth? So density... Mass to volume, we're given what in that question? Mass of how many grams? 300 grams. Do we have the volume? We have to find the volume. So what's the volume for a cylinder? Pi r squared h. So volume is equal to radius of 3, height of 8. Our volume is equal to? 3 squared 9, 9 times 8, 72 pi. So the density is going to be 300 grams per 72 pi. Our unit is centimeters. That's an exact answer. This question wants it rounded to the nearest hundredth, so it's approximately 1. 33 grams per cubic centimeter. So for part B, it says another candle is made out of the same wax. So what does that tell us? Same density. Same density. So this time we're going to form the wax into a cube. The mass of this candle is going to be 475 grams. To the nearest tenth, what are the dimensions of the cube? Well, we know the density. I'm going to write the exact answer. So in the equation, density equals mass over volume. The missing letter is V. Can you use the volume that we get, or that we're going to calculate, to find the dimensions of the cube? Not the square root, the volume for a cube is what formula? So for part B, volume of a cube is equal to the length of its side cubed. So once we're given the volume, instead of taking the square root, we'll take the cube root and we'll have the answer. Okay? So, excuse me, the equation for volume is 1 over what? M over D, so we do 475 over 72 pi centimeters cubed. Now, to find, I'm going to replace the V with the S, so S cubed. I'm leaving everything exact right now. Thank you, Maddie. It's 475 divided by the fraction. 475 grams divided by the density, which is 300 grams to 72 pi centimeters cubed. So I'm going to replace the V with the S. We're just showing the work. You're going to do all the calculations in your uh, calculator. So S cubed equals this. And to find S, we'll take the cube root. So it's the cube root of 475 divided by 300 over 72 pi. So let's do the math. All right, so the exact answer, the cube is going to cancel out the, or be canceled out by the cube root, so the edge is exactly 7.10152, and then rounding, did it say to the nearest tenth? Part B, yes. Um, each edge is about 
7.1 centimeters. Last part, um, part C, another candle is made out of the same wax, so we're going to use the same density. The diameter of the base of the cone is going to be 4 centimeters and the height is going to be 12 centimeters. Um, to the nearest gram, what is the mass? So density is 300 grams over 72 pi cubic centimeters. We need to find the volume. Volume for a cone is one-third pi r squared times the h. Our radius is 2. So times 2 squared times the height of 12. So let's take a third of 12. 4. 4 times the 4. Volume is 16 pi cubic centimeters. So now to find the mass, how do you find mass? Nick? Density times volume. So density, which is 300 grams over 72 pi centimeters cubed, I'm going to multiply that by 16 pi centimeters cubed over 1. You can cancel the unit, you can cancel the pi, so what is 300 times 16 over 72? We're going to round to the nearest gram. So it's approximately nearest whole number, how many grams? 300 times 16 over 72. Nearest whole number is? 67, good. Number seven is population density. So the number of people, we're going to compare the number of people over the space or the area of land that you're talking about. So there are 17,620 people per square mile in New York City. If New York City is 468 square miles, approximately how many people live in the city. So the equation is going to be 17,620 is equal to, what's the right side? So population density equals the number of people over your area or space. So we know we have 17,620 people per square mile. So the right side is going to be, what is going on? We're still recording. A little glitch within software. What's the right side? Do we know the number of people? No, that's what we're looking for. So we know the population density. We're trying to find out how many people. That's this top part here. So equals x over, what's the area of our city? 468. So a quick product, x is equal to this times this. And we have how many people live in NYC? Can anyone read that answer to me? 8 million, 8 million, 246,160. But I don't know if this statistic is true. I don't know if this piece of data, I don't know if it's true. Okay. Last one, number eight. It says there are 30 students returned to the class after playing outside for recess. Over the course of the next hour, each person produces 800 BTUs. So how many total BTUs do we have if there's 30 people and they each produce 800? There's going to be 24, yes, because 8 times 3, but then how many zeros? Okay, so we have 24,000 BTUs. Over the next course hour, we have that the room is 20 feet by 20 feet by 12 feet. So the volume, 20 by 20, 20 times 20 is 400. 400 times 12. 4,800 cubic feet. 
Now we want to find how many BTUs per cubic foot. So we take this 24,000 and do what? BTUs per cubic foot divide by 4,800 cubic feet. And how many do you get? Five BTUs per cubic foot. Now I don't know, I think my stop button should be about 